Losing fat is so bloody easy, yet somehow we are in the most overweight and obese period in human history. In part one, if you haven't already watched it, I'm gonna catch you up to speed right now. I explained the importance of having basic education and the role that plays in making more informed decisions. I then went into detail on the caloric deficit and why that's the most important metric whether you decide to gain or lose weight, period. Then I compared the difference between non-active and active calories and why incorporating physical activity should be absolutely non-negotiable if your goal is to lose weight or lose fat. And also touched the base on why incorporating a gradual transition is what will ultimately guarantee and cement your success in both the short and long term. Today in part two, I'll be giving you an additional 10 or more tips, simplifying the entire process, so that by the end of the video, you'll have absolutely everything you need to begin working towards your health and fitness goals to start losing fat today. So we're gonna start off with a very important analogy. Person A is someone who decided to clean eat. Person B is someone who decided to dirty eat. Both of their goals is to lose weight, is to lose fat. We have already concluded that in order to accomplish this, you must be in a caloric deficit. That means either burning more calories than you consume or eating less calories than you burn. So as long as you are below your maintenance calories, you are gonna be losing weight. So can someone who is dirty eating still lose weight? The answer is yes. Do I recommend this? Absolutely not, because although you are remaining below your maintenance threshold, and although that is the catalyst for weight loss, is it healthy? Hell no! So now that you understand this and we're on the same page, here is my first tip. Avoid processed foods. The reason this is so important is because the majority of processed foods are significantly caloric dense. That means the amount of food you are consuming versus the amount of calories that these foods contain are astronomical. So you're better off just consuming nutrient dense foods and foods with less calories. That for the majority of the time leans towards foods that are non-processed, foods that aren't takeaway, foods that aren't junk foods, and essentially foods that are whole foods. Which then leads me into tip number two. Incorporate more nutrient-dense foods. The reason this is important is because nutrient-dense foods in your diet, like whole foods, like vegetables, like fruits, like potatoes, sweet potatoes is a perfect example, like oats, contain significantly more fiber, which will allow you to be fuller for longer, which will allow you to increase your metabolism, which will allow you to consume more vitamins, more minerals, more antioxidants in your diet. So overall, be more healthy and fit. Which leads me into the third tip, which combines both of the first two together. Incorporating the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your diet should be healthy, non-processed, no junk, no takeaway, no sugary nonsense, and the other 20 should be foods that you enjoy, foods within reason, foods that you know will make sure that you remain consistent in your overall nutrition, in your overall calories. And the 80-20 split is calorie-wise, calories, because <laughs> the 20% depending on what you eat, can still overcome the 80% of healthy foods. That's how caloric dense some unhealthy foods are. So the 20% rule applies to the split of calories, not the total split of volume, if that makes sense. If you need further clarification, comment below and I'll give you a more in-depth and simplified answer. Now tip number four, please for the love of God, avoid all fat diets. Don't do keto, don't do carnival this, carnival that. Any diet that removes a macronutrient from your diet is a rubbish diet. You must be consuming all three macronutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Protein, to gain and strengthen muscle. Also as a muscle loss prevention during a dieting period. A lot of people don't understand that the longer you draw out your dieting phase, the higher the likelihood of 
muscle loss. Protein, of course, is also important for strengthening and repairing our bones, as well as our organs, among other things. Then we have the controversial one. Sorry, the, the controversial one. A lot of you don't understand the importance of carbohydrates and the role it plays in our diet, especially during a fat loss and weight loss period, especially in a weight gain and muscle gain period. Our muscles and our liver contain and store the glycogen. Predominantly, like 80 to 90% is stored in our muscles. Now that you know this, factor in during your workout, during your cardio sessions, during your exercise sessions, the glycogen is used up. This glycogen is important in order to sustain your workouts, in order to sustain the periods of active calories to make it extremely efficient, extremely effective. Understand as well that you saying that you don't want to consume carbohydrates or you want to completely remove it like the keto rubbish example means that you want to stay away from fruits, you want to stay away from vegetables, meaning that you're going to be vitamin and mineral deficient. Meaning that now you have another whole host of issues and problems wrong with you. Doesn't make sense, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, we also have fat, and fat obviously is there to provide us with proper organ function. That one is pretty straightforward. Going into tip number five, making sure that you are drinking enough water. This is the most bizarre thing to me, that the majority of people simply can't consume a minimum of 2.5 liters of water per day. I like to tell my clients, three liters, and I'll get into that in a second, but the most abundant thing on earth, the most simple and easiest tip and easiest strategy, the majority of people aren't doing. Doesn't make sense to me. But three liters is so damn important because the majority of our muscles is made up of water, upwards of 70%. So now knowing that if you are dehydrated, you are not gonna be performing anywhere close to your potential in your workouts, in your cardio, in your exercise. Number two, now we have the metabolism benefits of water. Number three, now we have the sleep optimization of water. Number four, now we have the oral health, the organ function, the overall hormonal function. The list goes on, ladies and gentlemen. But making sure that you are consuming a minimum of 2.5, I like to recommend three liters, doesn't matter what size, shape, or whatever you are. Tip number six, making sure that you are resting enough making sure that you are incorporating enough rest days and sleeping enough hours per night consistently. Not trying to make up for all your lost hours during the week come the weekend. Making up for lost hours is not a thing, that's a complete myth. So let's start at number one, making sure that you are incorporating enough rest days. The reason this is so damn important, especially when it comes to weight training, resistance training, is because your central nervous system, as well as your skeletal muscular system, so your nerves and your bones, in addition to your muscles, must all get adequate rest. This comes in a form of taking a step away from weightlifting, resistance training, at least two times per week. No more than four times per week. That is my recommendation, again, for the majority of my clients. Now when it comes to sleep, making sure you've heard this time and time again, between seven and nine hours, per bloody night. That's it, I'm not gonna give you a specific number there, just make sure it falls between seven and nine hours per night. Me, personally, seven and a half hours is absolutely perfect. Understand that I train like an absolute animal in the gym. If I do not get seven and a half hours, my bones, my muscles, everything hurts, everything is sore. I get severe DOMS, so delayed onset of muscle soreness, and it is not a fun day. Number seven, motivation, mindset, and support. They all fall in one category, making sure that you have some sort of supportive network that can be friends, family, especially a coach that can keep you accountable, keep you motivated, keep you on the same path to achieve long-term as well as your short-term success. They can be there as well to celebrate your small wins. Everything in the gym that progresses you forward, even if you lift an extra kilo one week in comparison to the previous week, that's a win. You need someone there or friends, someone to let that person know, hey, look, I know way I got an extra kilo this week. I got an extra rep this week. I showed up an extra 10 minutes this week. And trust me, they'll be happy for you. The right coach will be absolutely over the moon for you. They want nothing more than to see you succeed, especially your friends and family. Maintain your motivation, have some sort of supportive network for you there. And what that's gonna do for you 
is make sure that your mindset stays A1. Your mindset is gonna be win, 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 win. No matter what, you know that song? Do you remember that song? That's exactly where I'm going with this. Support equals motivation equals mindset equals win. This is another massive one where a lot of people fall into the trap of that they just completely quit altogether. Do not compare to anyone but yourself but your own progress. Imagine you were to compare yourself to me. I've been lifting for 10 bloody years. I've been coaching for eight years. I've been running my own coaching and personal training business for over seven years. How can you compare yourself to someone of my training age and my caliber of research, education, and knowledge in the health and fitness department? It doesn't make sense. Don't compare yourself to your favorite fitness influencer. Don't compare yourself to your favorite celebrities. Believe me, the majority of them are taking gear, taking steroids. So stay in your lane, get your support system that I mentioned from before, like a coach, friends, family, that are gonna be there for you to celebrate your wins, not my wins. <laughs> Please, don't compare. Let's talk about consistency over perfection. Never ever try to be perfect in your plan. If you can, that's incredible, that's amazing. But don't put yourself down if you're unable to adhere to the perfect plan, the perfect strategy. Celebrate the consistency in your plan, celebrate those small wins I was speaking about earlier, and make sure that you are celebrating the fact that you are continuing to take action despite any small speed humps, despite any small setbacks. Long story short, consistency is significantly more important than perfection. The same reason quantity is better than perfection. So the quantity of days that you remain on schedule versus that one off random day that maybe you go to a party or event or a birthday and you just wanna go haywire, understand that wasn't the right way to go about things and go back immediately on plan is the way to go. Finally, we have plan. Having a plan in place, absolutely non-negotiable. Everyone must have a plan in place. If you do not plan, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. One of my favorite quotes from Charlie Monger, this famous investor. You must have a plan in place. Whether that plan be a plan that you've created for yourself, a plan that a coach gave you, having some sort of plan as well as some sort of measurable goal in place that you can divide in smaller goals. For example, right now I'm 86 kilos. Actually, by the way, <laughs> I'm 86 kilos. Let's say I wanna start losing weight, I wanna get down to 80 kilos. I wanna set that goal for me for eight weeks. I wanna make sure that I divide that goal to ensure that each week I'm staying on track and remaining on track. Then let's throw an additional tip in there, flexibility. Let's say something isn't working for you. Be flexible, change it. You don't have to adhere to this plan, this broad generic plan. Understand that every single person is different. Something I may enjoy and I may like in my plan may not be something you enjoy. So change it. Switch it around. Make sure it's the same calories at least. Make sure you at least targets the same muscle, the same muscle group. But that's where having a coach and having someone who knows this stuff is actually extremely beneficial for you. But as long as you understand that the flexibility aspect is there, you can change it. Who cares? What that's gonna allow you to do is remain consistent in the short and long term and continue to have sustained progress and avoid plateaus again in both the short and long term. So summary of that quickly, because I was spewing things, maybe I even confused myself. Flexibility is encouraged. Make sure that you change things around that you do not enjoy, that you know for a fact isn't making you happy, and you change it for something that is more consistent and that is more sustainable for both the short and long term. These things though have to be within reason, I'm not gonna switch um, a rice and chicken, for example, if I didn't like that sort of stuff for a juicy hamburger. That was just basically where I was going with that argument and that essentially wraps up the entire video. So if you wanna rewatch the video and you wanna go through the tips, this video, I'm gonna set chapters for you, that way it's easier to find and easier for you to just get a refresher upon what I just taught you. All of these tips, in addition to part one of losing fat is easy, can be used today for you to start losing fat today. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you liked today's video, drop me a like, drop me a thumbs up, drop me a like and thumbs up, comment below. And if you want to debate me in the comment section, feel free to subscribe as well. I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.